Good afternoon, Independence Mustang Wrestling fans. This is Jason Lang, and we're here at the second day of the Battle of Waterloo. We've got the top teams in all four brackets, the top four teams in all four brackets that, that started wrestling on Friday morning. And you can see Independence walking across the mat right now, shaking hands with the team from Alburnett, the Alburnett Pirates, is who Independence will be wrestling here this first round. We'll wrestle at approximately 3 o'clock approximately 5 o'clock and then 7 o'clock. So three rounds of wrestling here for Independence to sort out sort out the rest of this Battle, Water, Battle of Waterloo. Got some great wrestling going on in the middle of our middle of the arena here. We've got all the number ones wrestling on, on one mat. On two mats I should say. All the number ones wrestling on two mats. All the number twos, all the number threes, and all the number fours people that place first, second, third, or fourth in their bracket. So we're getting ready for Independence and Albertette. Looks like we're going to start off at 138 pounds. And I see Drew Davis heading over to the side, putting on an ankle. Ankle tag there, and here we go. Looks like it will be Drew Davis on the mat here at 138 for Independence. And hopefully we'll be able to be able to pick up who that is for Alburnett. The main screen here in the arena usually gives us usually gives us the two wrestlers that are on the mat, but it looks like they maybe are a little slow right now. Maybe they're waiting for one of the other mats to get out there. So Davis in on an outside single leg, trying to circle around behind. Got himself in pretty good position right now. If he can stay up on his knees and, and toes a little bit more. He's a circle, circle to his right to try and gather that leg in. Get a little bit of separation now there. A good job of bringing it up off the mat. Now just needs to settle in. He's got time. Should be able to score from this position here. Change hands on that single leg and wrap across to a double. But uh, Albernet's got a whizzer, pretty tight whizzer there. Albernet tries to get a little, little funky there with a, with a front roll. But Davis doesn't let it allow it to go into much of a scramble situation. He can get behind and hook a leg. He'll be able to get the takedown here. The referee has not awarded any points. He's looking to hook that ankle. 40 seconds left in the first period. We've got Albernet hanging on to Drew Davis's leg, and there he's going to reward two. So Drew is able to grab the far grab the far ankle. Now he's across with the cradle. So a good job after getting the two points. He jumped over to the other side and has a cradle hooked up. See what he can make of it. Not 100% sure. We believe this is Tucker Franklin of Alburnett on the mat right now. And Drew Davis here starting the dual meet off here for Independence. And the time's going to run out just as he was getting ready to turn his opponent over possibly for some back points. So no back points, two to nothing score for Drew Davis here. Heading into the second period at 138, so starting the dual meets today at 138. Right off the whistle, Arbonnet is able to clear the arm. Drew does a good job of getting, setting the hooks behind the, uh, underneath the shoulders. And uh, floating and following his wrestler as good as he can right now. Arbonnet back up to his feet though. He's got a, yep, there we go. Good job getting him back down to the mat. Referees aren't giving a whole lot of time. Kind of a not too official five second count before you've got to have your opponent back to the mat. Otherwise, it's going to be a stall call. Drew did a good job of uh, gathering himself, and in that case, just went ahead and kind of, kind of got him out of bounds. Tucker Franklin it is. We've got the official board going now. There's a nice job. Chicken wing jumping over. Looking for some quick points, quick back points for Drew Davis. Albernet's able to counter it, get up to his feet. And no change in no change in control yet. Drew needs to look where he's at right now. Go ahead and use that pressure Albernet's putting in. And there you go. Take him up over top and out of bounds and there shouldn't be any change. I don't believe the referee awarded an escape on that, so we go back to the middle. 
59 seconds left in the second period. Drew Davis on top, 2-0 to zero here at 138. Once again, wrestling Tucker Franklin of Alburnett. Davis stops the first motion of his opponents. Got a, had a head lever, the wrist, and thought he was going to go to a head lever on the other side. Instead, decides to bar it up and now has a chicken wing. And here's where he's going to try and take that chicken wing kind of the, the other direction. A lot of times you take it forward and around his head. He's trying to pull it across the back. Looks on the right side for a half Nelson. Twenty-six seconds left in the second period. Now we're at a point where we just want to maintain control here. Nice half Nelson here on the on the right side. Oh, he's got that very pretty deep. If he can jump out, not going to be able to jump out and make anything of it. But that uh, he had that thing sunk pretty deep. There's that chicken wing pulling it across the back again, trying to trying to pick up some back points. So he's had a few opportunities here to get back points, but just not quite enough. So two to zero score still takedown in the first period and that was towards the end of the first period rode him out the whole second period and now Davis's chance to get down in the bottom position hopefully pick up a escape or reversal first match of this dual meet against Al Burnett thanks a lot for everybody watching and listening here this afternoon we appreciate all the all the support that independence wrestling gets going to try and have a schedule set up as we move into January and into February, sectionals, districts, and state. We'll try and do a better job of getting a schedule set up. We weren't sure if we were going to have this opportunity. There's Drew Davis with the sit out, little hook shot, reaching up for the head, so he squared up with him. Now needs to circle and face. Alburnett snaps him down, comes back around behind, so no change in control there. Minute 15 left in the third period. Davis ahead, 2-0. to zero. at a point in time here where he just needs to make sure he stays in good position. It's really a, kind of on Alburnett right now to, to do the scoring more than it is for Davis. Davis' little changeover, Alburnett's riding behind. Alburnett was looking to sink a half in on that changeover. But Drew's not going to let that happen. 45 seconds left in the third period. See Coach Locken over there saying keep those elbows in. Keep the elbows in and try to get that one. Elbows in and try to get that one one escape. All right, Davis up to his feet right away. Al Burnett kind of uh, trying to get this crab ride situation where he's trying to load Davis up in his lap and looking for uh, looking for some back points. Drew's doing a pretty good job of avoiding that. Now Davis has his arm bar across his back. Alburnett now is going to switch over to a chicken wing on the right side. I'm not sure what he's got over on the left. He has a wrist. Drew breaks that chicken wing. Down to the final 13 seconds. Alburnett's just looking for a tilt. And it's going to get kind of sloppy here if he's looking. That's all he's looking for. He's going to have to throw his body all over the place. Stall call on Davis, but doesn't really mean anything. And that's how it's going to finish up. So we start the dual meet at 138 with the win, a 2-0 win for Drew Davis. So a nice job way to start the meet off for Drew Davis. And so the team score is Alburnett 0 and Independence 3. So stepping out next here at 145, we got Seth House on the mat for Independence. And we'll see who he has. Seth House wrestling Tanner Hoyer. Hoyer of Alburnett. I'm gonna try and try and pull up some ranking. There's House. Nice setup and into a double leg, but didn't quite change levels enough to get into those legs just a little bit better. But a good setup. Got in on the legs. Need to change levels a little bit better and penetrate just a little bit further to be able to pick up that takedown, but that was a nice shot by Seth House. A minute 30 left in the first period, the second match of the dual meet, another little setup there, trying, trying to get in there, Seth House, good job. Trying to be offensive here at the beginning part of this match. Another 
shot by House. There's three three tries. We like to like to see that three attempts to get in on the legs of his opponents. Boyer of Alburnett. One minute left in the first period. That's good offensive wrestling. Another shot by House and Hoyer just looking to maybe score off of our shot. So Seth will have to be careful with that if he's going to get in a little bit deeper. He hasn't quite gotten full penetration yet. Oh, there's uh, Alburnett with a quick little drop down to an outside single. And he's able to pull House back on, and there's a takedown for Alburnett. So Hoyer of Alburnett, after House really shooting three, four times, it was Hoyer that gets the first gets the first takedown. So Seth House behind 2-0, 30 seconds left here at 145, second match of the dual meet. Boy, Hoyer now with the... Had the, had the arm across the chest on the far shoulder and lifted House up off the mat, trying to split the legs and put him down to his back. But Seth was able to fight that off. Be careful to suck back here. Seth hitting the set out. Alburnett trying to trying to pull him back on his back. There should be one there. Oh, not enough room. That's where we get a tight, real tight fit here with the the. The chairs for the benches, when they're this close to the mat, sometimes we lose a little bit of action. And honestly, in that, I think uh, I think Seth would have possibly gotten an escape on that. But we didn't have time to sort out that he had he had kind of broken control or broken free from Alvernet. So final four seconds here in the first period. And that's how it's going to wrap up. So Drew Davis at 138, ranked number 10, doing a good job. We got Tanner Hoyer here of Alburnett. He's a junior. He's ranked number seven, number seven in class 1A at 145. So Seth House going 2-0 with him right now. This there's that so Seth just needs to be aware if he's gonna hit a sit out, he needs to stay in a ball. He can't sit his hips away from his head because Hoyer clearly has uh, has a good suck back. And he's gonna pull, pull his, try to pull, pull his opponent back to his back. Two to zero score right now. 135 left in the second period. We're at 145 at the weight class. Second match of this dual meet. Another sit out by House. Boyer is just absolutely looking for a suck back. He wants House to to sit out, and he's gonna try and try and pull him back to his back to get those get some back points. Seth doing a good job of avoiding that. He's got a Continue to be careful. In the third period, sometimes those things get a little bit harder to fight off. Good job by getting up to his feet. Sit out to your feet. But they run out of space. 109 left in the second period. Once again, Hoyer ranked ranked in Class 1A, ranked number 7 in Class 1A. So House, House doing a nice job here. Keeping it close. Going to give himself a chance. There's that suck back again. But House has a little bit of a, of a sense now of... Uh, of that move coming. Should have a sense of that move coming by now as Hoyer's hit it every single time Seth has sat out. 50 seconds left in the second period. Started off with a win at 138 by Drew Davis. It was a close win, but it was a two to nothing win. There's that, there's that lift that he tried earlier. Hoyer tried this earlier on the stand up by House. Across the chest to the far shoulder, drop down to the inside leg, elevate, Rotate the hips up in the air. And then House gets a stall call on the bottom end of this. So three-point near fall for Hoyer of Alburnett. There's another. Now Hoyer with the cross-face cradle. Going to try and tighten this thing up with the inside. Oh, he's going to go to a, go to a barbed wire. And not going to be able to get it by the end of the period. So five to nothing score. Hoyer of Alburnett ahead over House here at the end of the second period. House is going to let's have a little bit of blood there from something. So we're heading into the, into the third period here at 145. Seth House on the map for Independence. He's behind five to nothing. Did a good job keeping everything nice and close in the first period. Just gave up that takedown. The second period, right at the end, Hoyer was able to 
able to lift House off the mat and return him for some back points. And House is doing a pretty good job against this ranked wrestler, ranked in Class 1A, Hoyer. And we know that Alburnett does a great job with their program. Their ranked wrestlers are, are, are definitely legit as they go wrestle all sorts of different competition in Class 2A and Class 3A. Hoyer with a quick escape at the beginning of the third period. So six to zero score now. Now here's where Seth, here's where Seth needs to get back to that offense he had. He had the first three, four shots at the beginning of this match. Love to see him get back into that mode, back into that mode of thinking. I know he's down six to zero and you think, oh boy, how can I, how can I think about taking this guy down? But there's, motion there. I'm not sure if that was off of House's uh, attempt at a shot or a snap down by Alburnett. But hopefully we can get out of bounds and we do. We're going to head back to the middle. No points scored. But it'll be great to see Seth get offensive here. That's his sophomore season. He wrestled all year last year. A lot of varsity last year. Time to, time to kind of change your mindset with the whole year of varsity under your belt. Your mindset has to change a little bit and and uh, you got to be aware that, you know, you've earned your earned your stripes. You deserve to be out there, and you deserve to be out there winning. There's a little elbow pass, kind of a little underneath arm drag or a pop of the elbow by house, so that's good. Now it's time to commit. Time to commit to one of those shots. Go ahead and get in there. Change levels and penetrate through. Pick, Get a hold of the leg and see what happens. you got to put yourself in these situations to figure out how to get in and get out of them. Down to the final 38 seconds. Got a collapse down on that uh, right elbow. Alburnett pushes him out of bounds, new start. 33 seconds left. Now, you know, team-wise, team strategy, Alburnett wants to get another takedown, try and get a major decision here. Here's where Seth, uh, definitely don't want him to go into too much of a careful mode here, but if he's gonna hit a shot, it's gotta be a good one. We don't want to give Alburnett. There's Alburnett. There's a shot by House. Alburnett goes double underhooks and slides un slides underneath and picks up two. So it's going to be Alburnett with 10 seconds left to head eight to nothing, and uh, that'll probably go down unless something big happens here in the final three seconds. It'll be a, a loss by major decision. And the final score eight to zero. So the dual meet score, Alburnett now jumps ahead four and Independence three, the second match here at 145. So we move on up to 152. Not a bad bat match by Seth House. I mean, really Hoyer just take down and, and took advantage of the uh, of the stand up. Nice counter to the stand up, elevating Seth and getting some back points. Uh, just got to get Seth in on those legs just a little bit better. He's got to take that next step forward and uh, got to be able to take down these kids that are just a little bit better than he is. He's right on the cusp of, of becoming one of those wrestlers, one of those ranked wrestlers or one of those wrestlers that other teams know they're going to have a heck of a time scoring points on. So he's got to try and take that next step, take those shots on those good opponents and start learning what you have to do what you have to do to take down a ranked wrestler. Okay, two to one score here at 152. Peyton Nolting on the map for Independence, wrestling Connor Shalista. Shalista is a ranked wrestler for sure. One of the better wrestlers in the state of Iowa, ranked number one. Uh, so Peyton's gonna have, gonna have his hands full here against Shalista of Alburnett. Shalista with another takedown ahead four to one. Looking like he was going to load the hips up and try to maybe get a tilt and some back points on, on Peyton Nolte, but he switches off. Let's see where he goes here. Shalista in the top position, Peyton Nolte down underneath. Shalista now with the, the far, far arm, he's going to try and, yep, barbed wire. Going to try and create a lot of pressure across that shoulder. He flips Peyton Nolting over, and that's going to be a, a near fall. And got a long.
referee. Can't quite tell if he has. He has three on. Yeah, it's got three, so Shalissa's going to get three near fall points. Three more, so it goes ahead 7-1 to one now. 12 seconds left in the first period. Connor Shalista of Alberton and Peyton Nolking of Independence. Shalista ranked number one in Class 1A here at 152 pounds. Earlier today, we had the teams that wrestled fifth uh, place fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth in their in their respective pools. They came in this morning at I believe nine o'clock and started wrestling. You see the uh, scoreboard is given some of the some of the winners of those different pools. And maybe if I catch it right. So the sixth place pool, Osage won that one. Fifth place pool was Denver Tripola. Seventh place pool champ was Pleasant Valley. And the eighth place pool, the winner was East Waterloo. So got those results. I'll do a little digging here and see if we can find out how some of the other teams did in those different pools. Getting some blood time taken care of for Peyton Nolting here at 152. They're heading into the second period. And uh, Peyton's going to defer, it looks like. Shalista's going to get his choice. He's going to go in the down position. Shalista gets the quick escape. Shalista with the double leg. Just drive double leg. Take down, set up, and take down. So I said Nilting, Nilting has his hands full here with arguably one of the better wrestlers in the state of Iowa. A single leg by Shalista. So let him up and got right back in on a, on a single leg. 12 to 2 score right now. Shalista has got things pretty much under control over Peyton Nolting right now. Peyton just needs to do his best. There's that standing standing kind of tilt thing. I always reference reference Chase Straw with that one. He's, he's the one that was kind of doing that a lot last year. But no points scored. 12 to 2 still. Peyton Nolte on the mat. Now we got a three-quarter. No, I guess not. Barbed wire going again. The same thing that Peyton got pulled over with earlier in this match. The first near fall points that he gave up. Got that arm pulled tight across the chest. Shalist is able to work him over to his back again. 26 seconds left in the second period. I'm sure there's at least two points that probably happened there. Referee gives two. Oh, and then Peyton got free briefly, and then Shalista pancaked him over to his back. 10 seconds left, and that's the fall for Shalista. So Peyton thought he had some breathing room there for a second. And then Shalista just pancaked him right down to his back. So a fall in 3 minutes and 50 seconds. And so the team score now is Albernet 10 and Independence 3. So Peyton Nolting losing by fall at 152. And now at 160 we've got Jake Jewell on the mat. Jake Jewell ranked number 3 in Class 2A. Wrestling Bryce Paul of Abernett. And Jewel in on a single leg right away. Kind of a cross, shooting across the body on that single leg. So that's kind of where that scramble, how that scramble ends up. But Jake does a pretty good job of coming out in the top position. And picking up the first two points here at 160. So this is the fourth match, fourth match of this dual meet. And Jake Jewell on top, 2-0 to zero here with 1.10 left in the first period. Bryce Paul ranked number one. So we like that takedown. 
I knew I knew Paul was ranked pretty highly. I did not know he was ranked number one in Class 1A. So in this tournament, we had all three number one wrestlers at 160. We had the 3A wrestler from Lindmar, Tristan Johnson of Osage was at this tournament, and now Bryce Paul of Alburnett. Paul wrestling number three ranked, Jake Jewell in Class 2A. So. We're in store for some great wrestling here. I mean, this whole tournament is, is an amazing tournament. At most weight classes, we had real close to 10 guys at each weight class amongst the amongst the 32 teams. There were probably about 10 guys in each weight class that were ranked. Okay, Jewel goes ahead and cuts cuts Bryce Paul loose. wasn't going to mess around in that position. That both guys both guys like that down on their knees thing. So. Just squaring off here. See who just make sure you don't step forward into some guy that's down on his knees like that. You always want to be circling, circling away. Jake Jewell with a long double leg shot. He's gonna have some work to do here. Alburnett's got things tied up in the front headlock position. 12 seconds left. Alburnett coach is wanting him to, to snap him back down to the mat and see if he can spin behind. Down three, two, one, out of bounds. And I think they're going to go ahead and let the time run out. So head back to the middle, end of the first period. Oh, they went ahead and gave him an escape at that. Said that Jake lost control. So a two to one score here. Beginning of the second period, Jake Jewell in the top position. See if he can stay in this top, top position a little while and Try to run a little gas out of the tank of his opponent Bryce Paul of Al Burnett. Once again, Paul ranked. Paul's ranked number one. Oh, Jake, gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Paul. Jake got a little too far off to the side, and no, no, Jake's gonna get tossed over to his back. And Paul has this thing tight up over the head and uh Jake was riding his opponent, got out to the side, and Paul, Paul was able to sneak out from underneath, get up over top the head, under the shoulder, over the head, and picks up a fall. Uh, so Jake Jules had a kind of a tough run here at the tournament. He wrestled the number two ranked wrestler uh, earlier in the tournament from AD, AD, ADM and uh, lost a really close match, and now a loss by fall here early in the second period. So Alburnett now moves ahead 16 to 3. And let's see. Going up to 182. probably saw it on the screen I, I reached down to write something I'm trying to sort out uh, sort out where we're at right now Elliot Ryan on the mat for sure we know that wrestling Jackson Flitch it looks like uh, so Nick Holt There's a quick fall by Elliot. I apologize to Elliot Ryan. Boy, takedown cradle pin. That's all I can say about that. Uh, and that bloody nose that he was fighting last night. Apparently, it's back already. Thankfully, he had that quick fall. I got to sort out what happened at 170. Once again, sorry. I reached down to write some things down on my notepad. And I'm assuming Nick Holt must have picked up yeah, Nick Holt must have picked up a must have picked up a, a forfeit. I'll I'll get this sorted out. Yeah, and I apologize. Like I said, you probably saw it on the computer screen. There's McMillan. I'll see this one. McMillan with a forfeit. So we'll sort out the team score. So. Let's 
So I'm going to sort this out real quick. So we've moved all the way up to 220 pounds now. We have McMartin on the mat for Independence right now at 220. I'll see if I can get the team score, the team score sorted out here. Okay, we're at 285. So we. Tell you what, Jason Lang, I just I just missed this whole series of things going on. I apologize for that. So we must have picked up forfeits at both 95 and 220. So, yeah. Okay, so Independence picks up four fits at 195 and 220, trying to make this team score square up. Lane McMartin on the mat here at 285 against Albernet, the opponent from Albernet. And that is uh, Jake Langhoff of Albernet. So, we had Nick Holt with a win by forfeit. We had Elliot Ryan with a win by fall. At 195, I didn't see who went out and took that forfeit at 195 for sure. That might have been Hunter Crawford that stepped out there. And then at 220, Matt McMillan picked up the forfeit. And now at 285, we have Lane McMartin. So the team score might not be right on your screen. There's, a, there's one more forfeit hiding out in there. So the team score is actually 27 to 16. Independence on top of this dual meet right now. So McMartin, no score in, the, in that first period. It's all tied up 0-0, and looks like they're going to go on their feet again. So Lane McMartin on the mat. Our, our whole lineup, especially at the top end, starting at 160 and all the way through, our guys have done a good job this weekend of uh, being willing to move around move into different spots and uh, change things up a little bit so you know that's uh, if you caught channel 7 last night they caught Hunter Crawford on TV and they that was a that was a nice statement that's exactly the way I said exactly the way we try to run things here in Independence try to you know wrestling's an individual sport but in a dual tournament like this, you've got to do things for your team. Be willing to slide around, move around to different places, and do whatever it takes. So, oh, McMartin gets snapped down, and that could have been a lot worse with his elbow and his arms sticking up in the air like that. Albernet Langhoff could have, if he'd have gotten underneath that elbow a little bit more, it would have been all over. But, it, boy, Langhoff does get under the arm, gets that half Nelson, takes McMartin over to his back. And we got 54 seconds for Langhoff of Albernet to make some adjustments. See if McMartin can stay off his back here at 285. And that's a fall for Langhoff. A fall in 315. So 23 to 27 is now the dual meet score. Independent still on top. 27. No, 27, I'm sorry, 22. 27 to 22 is the team score. So Independence still in the lead. And we move to 106 pounds. And we'll see where we're at here at 106. Who we're going to send out in the mat. Well, we moved to 113. And so... So Independence forfeits at one. Independence is making this tough on me today. At 106, Independence gives up the forfeit. So now the, the dual meet score, 28 for Albernet, 27 for Independence. And we go to 113. And at 113, we've got Holden Griffith out there against Mason Wickman. Holden Griffith and Mason Wickman. Wickman able to get the first able to get the first takedown. Now we got some blood time we've got to deal with. 
So 2-0 score, Wickman of Alvernet over Holden Griffith of Independence at 113. Moving awfully fast with the uh, with the forfeits, definitely catching me off guard, trying to keep up with who's on the map. One name you might have been missing was Jarrett Orr this weekend, Friday, this Friday, Saturday, really Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We've had three days of dual meets in a row now. Uh, Jarrett Orr got some shoulder issues he's working through right now, so we definitely can't wait to get him back in the lineup again. Would have been a nice asset to have heading into this heading into this tournament. Could have definitely definitely helped out helped out in a few places. Still dealing with some blood time at 113. We started this dual meet off at 138. Drew Davis won a 2-0 decision. Seth House at 145 lost by major decision 8-0. Peyton Nolting lost by fall to a number one ranked wrestler. Jake Jewell lost by fall to also another number one ranked wrestler from Albanette. At 170, it was Nick Holt receiving a forfeit. Elliot Ryan at 182 had a fall. Then at 195 and 220, I believe at 195 it was probably Hunter Crawford that stepped out for the forfeit for Independence. And then Mac McMillan received a forfeit at 220 as well. And at 285, we just saw Lane McMartin losing by fall in his match. Independence then forfeited at 106. So dual meet score right now, Albernet on top, 28 to 27. And Holden Griffith on the map for Independence right now. Gave up the takedown right away in the first period. And is still in that bottom position. 40 seconds left now. We got the Albernet wrestler, Wickman, with the arm across the back. Got a bar arm, trying to drive that arm across his back. He's up over the head. He's going to drive that arm. Try to scoop underneath of it. Now the referee, yes. Let's see where he goes. 21 seconds. And he's able to drive it over. So there, oh, drives it right over to a fall. So a minute 45. At 113, Holden Griffith lost by a fall. So the final, or the dual meet score now. 34 to 27, Albernet ahead here after the 113 pound match. 34 to 27. Whoa, big throw here right at the very beginning at 120. Colin Fischel's on the mat. Got it underneath. Now a cradle by Albernet. Dropping it, coming up over top with the cradle. To suicide cradle. He's going to go underneath. Colin Fischel's has it stopped halfway through. If he can break the grip, he'll make life really interesting here. So we got Ben Moyer of Albernet. Comes out with the kind of the big throw. Didn't get any feet off the ground, but big throw. Took down Colin Fischel's. Moyer ranked number five in class 1A for Albernet. So came out looking for something big and so far all he's got is a 2-0 score and there's the escape by Colin Fischel so 2-1. to one. There's old Colin with that arm up in the air again and that's kind of what Moyer wants to be under those arms and yep there's under the arm over the head and Moyer's going to whip Fischel's down to the mat and pick up a fall in 54 seconds. So six more team points for Albernet. So the team score is 40 to 27 at the end of 120. And now we got Jacob Wolf stepping on the mat for Independence. And doesn't get any easier. Uh, he's wrestling Derek Hallbloom. Hallbloom ranked number three in Class 1A for Albernet. So Hall Bloom of Albernet ranked number three and Jacob Wolf out there for Independence here at 126. Got one more match after this one and then we'll call it a dual meet. Hall Bloom in on a double leg. Sliding up the body though. 
as Wolf fights it off, but Hallbloom's got the body lock. Gonna try and bring him in, and he is able to turn him back in and throw him to the mat and pick up two. So Jake Wolf down 2-0 two, two here, 40 seconds down in the in the first period right now. start back in the middle. 113 left in the first period. Hall Bloom Albernet and Jacob Wolf of Independence. There's Hall Bloom with the two on one roll through tilt and picking up some back points. Jacob Wolf almost had an opportunity to kick over top of that. But Hall Bloom stops that motion. Cross base now by Hall Bloom. And Hall Bloom's getting up. He's going to reach underneath and he's going to try and make this real tight. And uh, Independence Wrestling Room, we call that the barbed wire. Make that, pull that arm across the chest real tight. Work that pressure over. And that's usually where it ends up when you get that thing tight. So, minute 26. Jacob Wolf, a loss by fall. So the team score, Albert at 46 and Independence 27. Lost by fall there for Jake Wolf. And the final match of this dual meet now. We've got Tanner Erickson Dale stepping on the mat against, it looks like, Kanan Morris. So we're here at 132. This will be the final final match of this dual meet. Tanner Erickson Dale. Tanner's had a lot of close matches this uh, over the course of these two days here. Had a few wins, had a few losses, but all of them, he's you know, kept it close. I know he did have a major decision in there. There we go. Nice takedown on the edge of the mat by Tanner Erickson Dale. He goes ahead. He goes ahead 2-0. 40 seconds down in the first period. Independence in this dual meet behind. 27 to 46 right now. So right now, Tanner Erickson Dale just wrestling, wrestling for pride right now, trying to put his best performance out on the mat. There's an escape, escape by Morris of Alburnett, and they shoot him off the mat. And they're going to head back to the middle again. Down to 50 seconds left in the first period. And to get, there's a nice little softball throw. Good little shuck, little throw by. By Tanner Erickson Dale. But his opponent Morris has the legs so tight, we can't really, can't really move out of that situation. So back to their feet. Shot by Tanner. There's the fireman's carry. Good adjustment. Kind of got stalled out and good. He's going to get him over to his back. Way to keep the arm. Kept the arm on that fireman's carry. Worked up chest to chest. And he's going to get the takedown and three more. Nine seconds left. See if he can make some adjustments here. He's underneath the head really well. If he could pull that far arm. And the final second ticks away, so not quite enough, but hey, 7-1 to score. That's a, that's a nice way to head into the second period, nice way to get into the rest of this match. you got a nice buffer there, a six-point buffer. You've got an opportunity to kind of open things up a little bit. With the takedown to his back with that fireman's carry, that always lets the wind out of the sails of your opponent. He should be able to get a good head of steam moving forward. There's an outside single leg attempt by Erickson Dale. It's good to see. Keep going forward. There's a shot near the edge. Can't get stretched out here, though. He had that shot. He had his body all stretched out. Now he goes right back to that fireman's carry and ran out of room. 
Out of bounds, they'll get a new start back in the middle. Quick shot off the whistle by Alburnett. Reaches out and gets a hold of our ankle. But Al Tanner Exendale is in that top position, but just going to have to grab a hold of something and hang on. It's a tough place to be. Let's see what the referee does with this. Alburnett not changing too much. Oh, tries to kick out. Alburnett's able to get on top for the two. So take down Alburnett, 7-3 score. Tanner Erickson Dale heads back to the middle of the map. Dual meet score right now is Alburnett 46, Independence 27. Like I said, this will be the last match of this dual meet, Independence versus Alburnett. Alburnett, one of the better Class 1A teams in the state of Iowa. I haven't looked at the latest rankings. There's an escape by Erickson Dale, so good job off the, off the edge of the mat. And I head back to the middle. Down to 18 seconds left in the second period. See if Tanner, oh, Tanner, I thought he was gonna, he should have taken a shot there. As soon as he pulled that arm out, good thing Alburnett drugged that right leg out of bounds, that right toe out of bounds. As soon as Tanner pulled that right arm out, I knew Alburnett was gonna take a shot on that. He had that in there for defense. Five seconds. We're gonna wrap up the Wrap up the second period. Tanner Erickson Dale ahead eight to three. And Alburnett wants to stay up on their feet. Here's where Tanner needs to try to go back to his offense. Tie up that tie up that right hand side with that get that elbow tied tight. And get yourself back into that fireman's carry. Did a nice job of it earlier in the match. Go back to Go back to what you're successful with, but it's Alburnett moving forward right now. Need to get Tanner with the with the setup and moving forward. Alburnett pushing there in the middle again. I'd like to see Tanner get back on the offensive again. It's hard playing defense. A lot, lot easier to be playing offense. A lot of hand motion by Alburnett. Hand on the head. There's a shot by Alburnett. Edge of the mat. Don't know if he's going to be able to drag. Good counter by Tanner Erickson Dale. Good job of throwing the hips in as his opponent tried to get in there deeper. Heavy on the head again for Alburnett. That's, you know, Tanner tried to. Tried to reach and kind of give it back to give back to him a little bit heavy on the head, but what he did is he reached up with both hands. That's why he went down to the mat. Well, do that. There's a snap down and go behind by Tanner Erickson Dale. Good job. Eight to eight to three score. Yeah, ten to three. I was waiting for those points to go up there and an escape. So ten to three goes to ten to four. Now 35 seconds of takedown. He could get a major decision out of this. Love to see him finish this match off with a, with a takedown. Got to be careful in this ear-to-ear -ear situation because his opponent's going to look for him to push. And his opponent's going to look for a headlock for sure. Look for a headlock or some kind of a throw. Opponent has our left arm controlled. So there's a snap and spin. All right. Going to get a major decision out of this. 12 to 4, good job, way to finish the match. Tanner Erickson Dale. And that's how it's going to wrap up. Erickson Dale with the win by major decision. And they cleared that off there so fast. 12 to 4. And so with those four points, Independence's team score goes to 31 and Alburnett 46. So the dual meet started off at 138. Recap real quick. 
It was Drew Davis out there with the 2-0 win by decision. At 145, Seth House lost by major decision, 8-0. At 152, Peyton Nolting lost by fall. At 160, Jake Jewell wrestling, number one rated wrestler at 160 in class 1A and got caught. Got caught, put to his back, a loss by fall there at 160. At 170, 182, and 195, Nick Holt, and I'm pretty sure it was probably Hunter Crawford and Matt McMillan. Make sure I have that right. No, we had to, uh, I'll take that back. At 170, it was Nick Holt picking up a forfeit. At 182, Elliot Ryan won by fall. At 195, it was Hunter Crawford with a forfeit. At 220, it was Matt McMillan with the forfeit. So Independence kind of caught up at that point in time. Lane McMartin stepped on the mat at 285, lost by fall. Independence forfeited 106. At 113, Holden Griffith lost by fall. Colin Fishers lost by fall at 120. Jake Wolf lost by fall at 126. But all three of those wrestlers, highly ranked wrestlers for Alburnett. And we finish off this dual meet, Tanner Erickson Dale winning by major decision 12 to 4. So the final dual meet score is Alburnett 46 and Independence 31. So looking at the time right now, 3.55 is the time. Got a lot of dual meets still going on. They'll, they'll finish this round here, this round that started at 3 o'clock. They'll run it all the way through, checking some of the other mats out. We still have quite a few weight classes to go on a lot of the other mats, so my guess is probably around 4.30, probably around 4.30, go ahead and check the computer and, and see where we're at, see uh, what time we're going to start the next round. 4.30 would be my guess at this point in time. We'll go ahead and put a message out and uh, make sure we let you know online so you can watch and listen to more Independence Mustang Wrestling. So round one here. In this fourth place pool, round one, Independence loses to Alburnett, 46 to 31. Check back in, check back in in about a half hour, and we should have a little better estimate of when Independence will be on the mat again. So thanks a lot for listening, and we'll be back in about a half hour.